Indigenous Ship Owners Association of Nigeria, ISAN, is the umbrella industry association of Nigerians who are owners of vessels of 500 GRT and above. ISAN was formed for the purpose of promoting and regulating the business of ship ownership and management, in addition to creating employment opportunities for Nigerian seafarers. The burning desire of ISAN members is for Nigeria to take advantage of its competitive edge to harness its maritime and shipping potentials for the benefit of the country. ISAN's abiding passion is the elevation of Nigeria's shipping industry through the protection and promotion of its members' interests and through assisting relevant government agencies in creating and implementing policies that can develop the sector. The Indigenous Ship Owners Association of Nigeria, ISAM, has over 40 members. The members altogether own over 120 vessels with a combined tonnage of more than 2 million deadweight. The noble objective of uh, the ISAM is to move the shipping sector in this country from the commission agents that we used to be into actual participation. Our members cut across, cut across uh, Kanka of Pekos. It includes those who operate offshore vessels. It includes those who operate bulk vessels, bulk cargo vessels. It includes those who operate uh, passenger vessels. Regrettably, Nigerians, not many Nigerians are in the other area for now, but uh, there is solution for them. When we do have those who are operating uh, ferry service and uh, passenger vessels, yes, they will join us as members. When we do have those who operate uh, container vessels, yes, they will join us as members. When we do have those who operate uh, uh, bulk cargo carrier, why not? Or general cargo, why not? Iceland members' vessels are in good shape and they come in different sizes, ranging from as small as 200 metric tons to as large as 40,000 metric tons. It is disheartening to note, however, that most of the ships owned by Iceland members, or better still, most of the ships owned by Nigerians, are idle most of the time. The ships idle away on the waters not due to any defects or inability to function effectively or due to the absence of cargo. They idle away essentially because foreign ships, especially those owned by Greek ship owners, perform the jobs that are meant for ships owned by Nigerians. Foreign vessels trade on Nigeria's coastal waters with impunity, not because there is no law against such illicit activities, but simply because the law, especially the cabotage law, is not enforced. The foreign ship owners know that this is a lawless country, that they can bribe everybody. So they don't need waivers. So what they do is, the, co the current practice now is that they just go and stay just outside our bars, outside the offshore limits. And from there, they trade effectively. They know that they, who, who is going to arrest them? Task force? Who? So it's only when... Um, the Nigerian government shows the type of aerofile zeal that the foreign foreign ship owners will know that, yeah, you cannot come here. I mean, if you are in the UK as a taxi driver and you come upon a red light, you don't see any policeman, but you will stop because you know not to stop without the gravest gravest consequences. But here, you see red light and you will stop because you know if you just pass. Even the last man people, are, you can sort them out. It's a hand telephone, and you're operated by cranking. Most countries of the world, including the United States of America, Malaysia, and even Greece, operate strict cabotage policies. In USA, all waterborne goods and passengers between U.S. ports are carried in U.S. flagships built in the USA, owned by U.S. citizens, and crewed wholly by U.S. citizens. The U.S. Cabotage Law, otherwise known as the Jones Act, is strictly implemented. Greece also has a restricted cabotage principle which is religiously enforced. We can go on and on. We are 
The question often asked by keen industry watchers and operators is, why has it been difficult to enforce the provisions of the Nigerian Carbon Tax Law six years after coming into force? If you don't have a job, your ship is no use. I got a, I mean, I got two ships before the, before the crash of the steel prices in, uh, in the international market. I got those ships for 10 million with a loan of 10 million from a local bank. But I'm not able to pay my, uh, it's not that the ships are not, they are not old. And of course, very soon, those ships will become something else because they are not being maintained if we don't have job. I mean, today I'm owing my staff about five months salary on two new ships that I've just bought. The, 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 the cartel that are operating our waters has made sure that no Nigerian vessel is able to do, is able to be gainfully employed to maintain the standard that is expected. The economic impacts of a well-implemented capital regime are legion. Essentially, the Capitite law came into effect to restrict the use of foreign vessels in domestic coastal trade and promote the development of indigenous tonnage. If well implemented, the act will provide liberal protection of the local shipping industry from death or incapacitation due to the domination of the nation's coastal trade by highly subsidized foreign vessels. Effective implementation of the act will also boost the development of tonnage for the local industry and ignite a fire of tonnage acquisition to the benefit of the Nigerian economy. Strict implementation of the act will also impact positively on capacity building in the areas of mining and building of ships in the country. Other areas where the act will have impact are revenue generation and conservation of foreign earnings, as well as during economic crisis and national emergency, defense and security. Employment opportunities for Nigerians, education and training of seafarers, as well as the development of the nation ship registry are other benefits derivable from a strict implementation of the law. In highlighting the advantages of a strict enforcement of the Cabotite law, it is necessary to refer to the statement made by a U.S. Maritime Administrator, Clyde Hart Jr., to the students at the U.S. Merchant Maritime Academy on the Jones Act. He said, The Jones Act has been a cornerstone of U.S. maritime policy in every administration since over 80 years ago. In the first days of the new century, it remains relevant for America's economic health and for national security. Without any doubt, only a strict patriotic and committed implementation and monitoring of provisions of the Capital Act will make it achieve desired impact 